Hey, Reddit fam. It's me, Amber, a 26-year-old gal. For the past three years, I've been with Derek, who's 27. Our relationship was pretty typical. We had our fair share of arguments like any other couple, but we always patched things up. But recently, I made a mistake that caused Derek to vanish from my life, leaving me utterly bewildered. Who knew that going on a date with a wealthy guy would cause such a huge rift? I never imagined that one slip-up could shatter our relationship like this. Derek's reaction caught me completely off guard, and I'm still reeling from it. Just to fill you in, I met Derek while working as a model for a big brand ad campaign. He was one of the models, too, but there was something intriguing about him that drew me in. We hit it off during a break, realizing we had loads in common beyond modeling. Our bond deepened as we exchanged numbers and soon evolved from friendship to dating. Our time together was filled with joy, adventures, and a profound emotional connection that I never thought possible given my hectic schedule. Derek became my partner in crime, my confidant, and my best friend, and I couldn't have been happier. Our relationship has taught me the value of taking risks and being open to unexpected connections. Derek has shown me a love that transcends surface-level attractions, and I'm thankful for the authentic bond we've built. Being models, we relied on landing as many gigs as possible to cover our bills and expenses. Thankfully, we were both successful in our careers, so finances weren't a concern. However, everything changed when the pandemic hit. Suddenly, we found ourselves struggling to make ends meet. To ease the financial strain, we made the decision to move in together, pooling our resources. Initially, it felt more like having a roommate, with minimal intrusion into each other's lives. Together, we managed to navigate the financial challenges and make do with our limited savings. But very soon we started having petty fights about who washes the dishes, who cooks food, etc., etc. I realized that Derek was only a good face and did not like participating in any of the house chores. Also, I hated the way he managed his money. He did not have a concept of saving money for emergencies or having some money stashed away for bad times. I found it frustrating to constantly pick up after him and cover for his lack of responsibility. Eventually, I had to have a conversation with him about our expectations and boundaries when it came to sharing responsibilities and managing finances. I told him how we needed to find a better way to split responsibilities. He did agree to mend his ways and make sure he takes up his share of responsibilities. I was satisfied and happy and thought that maybe he wasn't aware of how to coexist with another person. I was hoping to see some changes in his habits and see the positive impact of our conversation. Unfortunately, it became clear that our financial values and priorities were too different for us to continue living together harmoniously. I was feeling anxious and overwhelmed with the amount of never-ending tasks around the house. Also, Derek was not the kind of person from whom I could expect any kind of help or responsibility to do household chores. It became increasingly apparent that our living situation was not sustainable, as our differing financial values and priorities caused constant tension. I realized that to maintain my own well-being, I needed to find a new living arrangement that aligned better with my needs and expectations. I knew that I just had to hold my breath till this pandemic was over and everything was back to normal, so that I could then ask Derek to leave. I knew in my head that this relationship was over from my end, and I just had to wait for the right moment to break the news to Derek. It was clear that prioritizing my own mental health and happiness was crucial in making this decision, even if it meant having difficult conversations with Derek about our future living arrangements. It was evident that there was a cold and unsettling uneasiness between us. I knew that delaying the inevitable conversation was only prolonging both of our suffering, but I also needed to ensure that I was in the right headspace to handle the aftermath of ending the relationship. It was time to gather my courage and have an honest discussion with Derek about moving forward separately. With the pandemic coming to an end and the world slowly getting back to normal, the industry was opening to resume work. I had an audition for a role in one of the television series that was going to be streamed on Netflix. It was a big deal, as it would mean that I would have a substantial amount of money which would help me with my finances. And probably I would be able to move out and not live with Derek any longer. I made sure that I was well-prepared and dressed appropriately for my audition. I did not tell Derek about it, 
as I did not want to have another argument over petty things and ruin my mood. He was still sleeping when I walked out of the door, and I was grateful for his partying habits which would help me get out of the door without trying to deal with him. As I left the house, I couldn't help but feel relieved that I wouldn't have to face Derek's negativity before my big moment. I knew that focusing on my performance was crucial, and avoiding any unnecessary stress was key. I arrived at the audition feeling confident and ready to showcase my talent. Walking into the audition room, I felt a sense of empowerment, knowing that I had taken control of my own happiness and success. After the first round, we were asked to wait for the result of shortlisted candidates. I could see that there were a lot of people who had applied for various roles. I started interacting with one of the guys auditioning for the main role. His name was Darius, and he would be a pretty face for the main role if that is what they were looking for. He kept telling me that the audition was just a formality, as he already knew that the main part was his. I wondered where he got all that confidence from, or maybe he was just bluffing to make sure that he lessened the competition by spreading these false rumors that would help him get the part. I was done with the look test and had to wait another two hours for the next round. We were asked to go for lunch and come back after two hours. I decided to go to a nearby cafe and wait there. As I was walking, Darius, who I was talking to earlier, asked me if I wanted to join him for lunch. Since I had nothing better to do, I said, why not? It would be better to pass these two hours talking to someone instead of sipping coffee all by myself. He asked me to wait at the main entrance as he had to get his car from the parking lot. It was more than 10 minutes, and I was still waiting for him to get his car out. There was a Porsche that kept honking and I tried to make way for it. I was about to lose it when the window rolled down, and Darius asked me to get in. I couldn't believe that he was driving a Porsche. I quickly got inside and we drove to some fancy restaurant for lunch. We spoke on various topics during lunch. Darius told me about his family history and how he was related to the makers of the series. He mentioned how proud he was of his heritage and the accomplishments of his ancestors. It was fascinating to know how much of a snob he was. It seemed like he was rubbing it in my face that he came from a privileged family and did not have to worry about anything in life. I tried to keep up the facade of me being interested in him to use it to my advantage. However, deep down, I couldn't help but feel a twinge of jealousy towards his seemingly perfect life. Despite my envy, I knew that maintaining a positive relationship with Darius could potentially benefit me in the future. We came back for the next round of auditions after two hours. I got his number as he mentioned that he would be able to get me a good part in the series as he liked me. He asked me if I was single, and I lied that I wasn't seeing anyone right now. Obviously, there was no way I was going to mention Derek as I had been meaning to dump him as soon as I got a decent project to work on. He asked me if I would have a problem going out on a date with him this evening after the auditions. I figured, why not? I could just make an excuse telling Derek that the auditions went for a long time, not that I owed him an explanation. As we chatted more, I found myself genuinely interested in getting to know him better. He was a nice guy behind all that facade of being born with a golden spoon. I decided to go for it and agreed to the date after the auditions. I was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed our conversation and felt a connection forming. It seemed like taking a chance on this new situation might be worth it after all. I was excited to see where things could go with Darius and felt optimistic about the potential for a meaningful connection. Opening myself up to new possibilities felt refreshing and invigorating. Darius took me to a Michelin star restaurant for dinner. I knew that it would be very difficult to get a reservation last minute at such restaurants. Moreover, we were seated in the private section with the view of the entire city. I couldn't believe that I struck gold by talking to the right person. My day couldn't have been much more perfect than this. I was glad to have made the right choice and could see that this one decision could change my life forever. Darius was not only loaded, but also the fact that he was interested in me was something I could make use of. The night took a very romantic turn, as Darius was more and more interested in getting to know me as a person. I wanted to make sure that I presented the best version of myself so that he gets blown away and starts dating me instantly. I was thrilled at the thought of potentially starting a relationship with someone as rich and handsome as Darius. I knew that this could be the beginning of something truly special. 
I wanted to make a lasting impression on him and show him all the qualities that make me unique. I was excited about the potential for a new beginning, with someone who seemed genuinely interested in me. I was ready to seize the opportunity and see where things could go with Darius. I knew that I had to balance between being interested and playing hard to keep him hooked. Very soon the heat turned on and led to passionate kisses between us. I knew that I had to stop before it ended in just a one-night stand. I stopped and asked him if we could take it slow. Zay, yay. I made sure that he dropped me a little far away from my apartment, as I did not want to run into Derek. I kissed Darius goodbye and told him we would talk soon. As I walked towards the apartment, I noticed that the lights were out. There was no way in hell that Derek would have slept so early. I unlocked the door and switched on the lights to see that the house was empty. I couldn't believe that we got robbed in that too in a locked house. I was pretty sure that I unlocked the door just now, so there was no way that everything would be missing without even having the house unlocked. My heart sank as I realized that not only were my valuables gone, but my sense of security had been shattered. I quickly called the police to report the burglary and began to assess the extent of the damage. I started scanning each and every room to make sure that it was not a prank. Even if it was, there was no possible way to shove all the furniture and the other stuff into any room and make it look like a robbery. I started calling Derek in the meantime to let him know that the house was completely empty. He kept declining my calls, which made me even more frustrated than I already was. I knew that he was irresponsible, but he should at least pick up my calls to see if it was something urgent. I was too stressed out, so I decided to cool myself by splashing cold water on my face to calm down my nerves. I saw a note stuck on the bathroom mirror in Derek's handwriting which said, I could not believe what I was reading. I kept pinching myself so that I could wake up from this horrible dream. Unfortunately, it wasn't working as it was happening in real time. My heart sank as I realized Derek had left me without any explanation. The note on the mirror was a cruel reminder of his cowardice. I quickly realized that Derek was the one who moved everything out of the house. It was not a robbery as I was assuming. He left me feeling hurt and confused. I knew I had to confront the situation head on and figure out what had gone wrong in our relationship for him to take such drastic steps without even a discussion. Derek had emptied the entire house, not even leaving a single rug or cloth or a cup in the kitchen. I was sitting on the floor with the note in my hand, unable to even process what had happened. My day started on such a good note and everything was going so fine, actually. It was going great till I came home. I was left with no clothes, nothing to make food with, nothing to sleep on, and no toiletries. It was so late at night that there was not much I could do apart from trying to keep calling Derek and asking him what the hell happened and why he did this. What was the point of all this? Somewhere I could even make up the scenario where he must have owed money to people, and there's a scheme in and took away everything. That was the only logical explanation that I could think of right now. I still do not understand the note that he left. I was the one taking care of most of the finances in this house, so why the hell would he want to get rid of me? I was the one who was fed up with him and his spending habits. I need to figure out what his note meant and why he would leave me in this situation. Maybe he thought I was the one causing financial issues and wanted to start fresh without me. I guess I'll have to wait until he decides to come back and explain himself. It's frustrating not knowing the full story but maybe it's for the best if he's out of my life for good. Maybe he felt guilty about his spending habits and wanted to protect you from any financial burden. Or perhaps he thought that by leaving, he was giving you the freedom to live your life without him holding you back. I tried sleeping, but as you know, it's impossible to sleep on a cold and hard floor. I decided to write a post that would help me kill time and also help me understand how things change so drastically. I was the one who wanted to leave Derek and go my separate way. But plot twist, before I could even get to the point of kicking Derek out, he emptied the house by leaving a note which did not give me any context at all. I'm hoping that anyone out there who has read my story so far would have a clue as to what happened and why. I'm unable to make sense of all this because it sounds crazy. 
Why would a guy who literally had to do nothing around the house and pile on his girlfriend for everything just up and leave? I would request if anyone has an idea about what would have gotten into Derek to just leave without an explanation. The note he left does not really give much perspective into his actions. I've been racking my brain trying to figure out what could have triggered this sudden departure. It's hard to understand why someone would leave without any explanation, especially after being so dependent on their partner, hoping to get a few explanations from you guys regarding the actions of Derek and give me some logical reasoning behind it. Also, please suggest what would be the course of action for me going forward. Thank you for taking the time to read so far, awaiting your suggestions and responses. Update. Hello all, I did it. I am back with a better understanding as to what happened after I was left with an empty house without an explanation by Derek. The next few days were me trying to get in touch with Derek to figure out what led to his sudden disappearance. Despite multiple attempts, Derek remained unreachable, leaving me feeling frustrated and confused about his unexpected absence. I couldn't shake the feeling that something serious must have happened for him to cut off all communication so abruptly. Why did he have to take off with all the stuff in the house? It was established that he was not in trouble, and there was no logical explanation for his disappearance. As the days went by, my worry for Derek's well-being only grew stronger, and I couldn't help but wonder if there was more to his disappearance than met the eye. I decided to reach out to mutual friends, and hopes of gaining any insight into his sudden vanishing act. However, none of them had heard from Derek either, leaving me even more puzzled and concerned. I couldn't shake the feeling that there was a deeper reason behind his sudden disappearance, and I was determined to uncover the truth. Despite my efforts to piece together the puzzle of Derek's disappearance, I found myself hitting dead ends at every turn. The mystery surrounding his vanishing act only intensified, fueling my determination to unravel the truth behind his sudden absence. I then tried my second best option, which was Darius. He instantly picked up my call and started flirting with me. I did not want to show him that I was desperate for the role, but I tried to convey that point without making it seem that way. Darius asked me if I was willing to meet him as he would like to get to know me better. I was, of course, over the moon. I knew that Darius may be that one person who could get me out of the mess I was in. He told me that he would pick me up in the morning and ask me to keep the entire day free because he was planning something big and wanted to make sure that I was completely available and present to enjoy those moments as he wanted to spend as much time with me as he could. I told him that of course I would be available, and I'm also keen on getting to know him better. After talking to him I quickly ordered a dress suitable for going out tomorrow with Darius. He picked me up at 7.30 in the morning and told me that it was going to be a really long day. I was obviously excited and started thinking ahead of myself that maybe this could lead to something more than just friendship. Hell, I was praying for it to be more than just friendship. We drove to a cabin in the woods which was quite cozy and romantic. We spent the entire day getting to know each other and telling childhood stories. We even went hunting and set up a camp by the lake. I had the most romantic date in a very long time. Things between us got heated when we were alone in the forest. The chemistry between us was sizzling hot and undeniable. I was very confident that I had smitten Darius and very soon he would want to officially date me. It was almost midnight when he dropped me home. I would have offered for him to come inside if I had the furniture at home. I lied to him that I would be moving out of here soon and the place was a mess so I would like to invite him to my new place once I have it set up. He told me that there was no rush and that I could take my time until I felt that it was safe for me to call him home. He said that he was going to wait patiently without expecting too much. I thanked him for his understanding, kissed goodbye and started walking to the door. I was trying to unlock the door, but it kept insisting that the password was incorrect. I pulled out my phone to double-check it and see if I could get it unlocked using the app on my phone. When I pulled out my phone, I could see calls from my landlord that I missed due to bad service in the forest. She left a message saying that since we had broken the lease without prior notice, she had no choice but to not give us the deposit back. I was going to make sure that it would be difficult for us to find another house on lease easily. I did not understand what she meant by breaking the lease without prior notice. 
I was about to call her to tell her that it might be all a misunderstanding, but it was past midnight, so I would have to wait till tomorrow to clear up any miscommunication that had happened, which led to her thinking that the lease was canceled. I had no place to spend the night at, so I decided to stay at a hotel for tonight and figure it out tomorrow, as I was too tired to deal with it right now. I called my landlord the next morning. She told me that she was very upset by the way I handled this entire situation. If I was unhappy with the place, I should have mentioned it to her and not let my boyfriend call an abuser. If we were vacating the house, then we should have done it by letting her know. And it was a bad thing to do it without giving her a heads up. I tried to explain to her that I was no longer with my boyfriend, and he was doing this out of spite. She told me that she would have believed me if I at least had my clothes in the house. But the fact that it was empty does make me look like a liar. I told her that there is something I could do to get the house back since I had nowhere else to go. But she told me that she had already found a new tenant who would be moving in tomorrow, and there was nothing she could do about it. I thanked her for understanding my situation and not giving bad reviews to me as a tenant, so that at least I could afford to find another house soon. I asked if she could at least give me some time to find a new place, but she insisted that the new tenant was already scheduled to move in today, so there was nothing she could do to help me. I left feeling grateful for her understanding, but also worried about finding a new home on such short notice. I did not get any part in the series which came as a shocker to me. I had been in constant touch with Darius, and he never let me know that I might not get any role. I kept asking him about the details of the next rounds, but he kept dismissing me telling me that I did not have to worry about any of it, as he would take care of it. One of my friends who had also auditioned called me to let me know that she got a peripheral role. She was sure that I would be one of the main characters and wanted to know what character I was playing. When I told her that I didn't get a part so far, she started laughing. She told me that she would keep it a secret if I did not want to reveal it yet. I did not understand why she was being so adamant that I got one of the main characters. She told me to stop acting as she already knew that this series was being directed by one of Derek's very good friends, so there was no way I wasn't going to be in the series. I also knew this friend that she was talking about. She laughed at me and said I could continue denying all I wanted, but she already knew that Darius was going to play the main lead, and Derek was the second lead of the series. I was speechless. I had no clue that Darius was Derek's friend. Is that the reason why Darius approached me on purpose and kept toying with me? He intentionally kept me busy so that Derek could execute his plans of emptying the house and calling my landlord. All this while they were just playing around with me and I was so stupid to fall into their trap. As I processed this new information, I couldn't help but feel a mix of surprise and anger at the elaborate prank they had pulled off. It was clear that they had been testing me all this while. The sparks between me and Darius were not genuine, and I couldn't believe I had been so easily fooled. The betrayal stung, but it also made me realize the importance of being more cautious in the future. I kept replaying the day of the audition in my head to know what went wrong. Until we had lunch, Darius really wanted to give me the part, but when I told him I was single, that's when things changed. Apparently, he called Derek and let him know that his girlfriend, for whom he had literally begged his friend to get her the part, was about to ditch him and flirt away with his friend. That is when they decided to keep me busy and saw that they could make sure that I would get the shock of my life once I reached home. I had no idea that all this was going on behind my back. When I finally arrived home, I was completely blindsided by the betrayal and deception that had taken place. It was a painful realization that those closest to me had orchestrated such a hurtful situation. I felt a mix of anger, sadness, and disbelief as I processed the situation. It was a harsh reminder that not everyone has your best interest at heart, even those you trust the most. Within a week, they announced the new series with the entire cast. They had a grand event to introduce the fresh faces playing each character. I sat in my new cramped apartment watching it live, and wondering to myself that I could have been one of the main leads. I mean, if and only if I hadn't flirted with Darius and told him about Derek, things would have been completely different. But I don't blame myself for hiding the fact that I was single as I was planning to leave Derek once I had a stable income. There was no love left between us, and we were always bickering. I wanted to get out of it before it became toxic.
I still don't understand what I did so wrong for both these guys to ruin my life and career. Was Derek testing me in all this by not letting me know about Darius and seeing if it was worth investing his time and money in? I really can't make anything of what he did. He was a coward to not even try and confront me after everything that he did. As a marketing strategy, they released a short story to get the audience hooked on the show. I couldn't believe that they made a short story out of the scenario of me flirting with Darius and made sure to use my original name so that everybody in the industry knew that this was about me. No wonder that no one wanted to work with me anymore. The girls gave me bitchy looks and commented to stay away from their boyfriends and husbands as they thought that I was here just to snatch away their men, as if I had nothing better to do in life. The tension on set was palpable, and I could feel the walls closing in on me. I was removed from the projects that I was previously a part of. I felt unfairly judged and ostracized, leading to a significant decline in opportunities for collaboration. The rumors and gossip spread like wildfire, tarnishing my reputation in the industry. Despite my best efforts to prove myself, the negative perception persisted, making it increasingly difficult to rebuild my professional relationships. The situation became so toxic that I ultimately had to consider seeking opportunities outside of the industry altogether. I tried working as a barista and as a waitstaff. It was such a difficult job. I was being catcalled and I could not take the dirty stares from men. There was no applause or recognition for the work I did. I had to put in eight to ten hours of intense work and get paid in peanuts. I worked much harder than I did when I was a model. I was still getting yelled at, and there were always complaints from customers as I would not let them grab me inappropriately. I was slowly losing my hope, and I could see that there was not much I could do. I just had to endure it for the time being till things cooled off so that I could start working again in the glam industry. I knew that it was going to be tough, but not impossible. I just had to keep being optimistic and fight head-on with the dark path to see the light at the end. I kept motivating myself as there was nothing much I could do to pull through. A few weeks later, I started circulating my portfolio, but was getting rejected as no one wanted to mess with Darius and his family. I had to kiss my career in modeling and acting goodbye thanks to Derek and his jerk of a friend Darius. He used his family influence to make sure I was not shortlisted by any of his other companies that he did business with. I was furious at both of them for ruining my life. I did not know what to do next in my life. All these days I motivated myself to pull through, but it was too overwhelming for me to start afresh. I mean, I had been modeling since I was 18, and that was the only thing I knew to do in life. A single mistake had ruined my reputation and all the hard work that I had put in to reach here. It was so unfair that just because someone is powerful, they are able to crush me because I aspired and tried to use an influential person to climb up in my career. Everybody does that, and it's not a crime. I was just unfortunate to be caught up with the wrong person. But it's not like Derek and his friend are saints. I'm sure they must have done unethical things to get where they are right now. It's frustrating how the consequences of one's mistake can overshadow all the hard work and effort put in. It's a harsh reality that sometimes power and influence can be used against us unfairly. However, it's important to remember that everyone makes mistakes, and nobody is perfect, not even those who seem untouchable. I couldn't believe how quickly my whole world came crashing down because of one error. It was a harsh reminder of the cutthroat nature of the industry, where power and influence can make or break a person's career. In times like these, it's crucial to stay resilient and learn from our mistakes in order to come back stronger. Despite the setbacks, it's essential to keep pushing forward and not let one error define our future success. Thank you all for being a part of my journey. I know that I might not have made the best choices in my life, but I feel like I deserve to have a decent life without being subjected to judgment for flirting with a guy to progress in my career. It was not like I slept with him to get a role. I'm sure that if Derek were in my place, he would have taken advantage of the fact that someone could get him a role in a show. I still don't accept the fact that I had done something wrong to get a role. The only thing I did wrong was not letting Derek know about how I had been feeling living with him. Apart from that, I tried everything I could to progress in my career and get out of all the relationships that were sour and rotten. I believe that opportunities should be earned through hard work and talent, not through personal connections.
it's important to maintain professionalism and integrity in all aspects of life, including career advancement. Thank you all for being supportive and understanding. I'm not going to give up just because of two jerks. I will pick up my life and show them that I don't need connections or influence to make it big. Thank you again for the courage that you guys give me. All right, that was a fun story. Now let's move on to another exciting one. Stay tuned and let's dive in. I'm 27 and my husband is 29. We have three kids, a five-year-old boy, a 16-month-old girl, and a four-month-old boy. Two years ago, I had an affair with a guy who was doing work on our house, which led to a pregnancy that I didn't know about at the time. The affair lasted for about a week, and I regret it deeply now. Throughout that time, I never stopped loving my husband and actually became more attentive to him while it was happening. After being with the other guy several times, I ended it suddenly. It happened when my son, whom I had just put down for a nap, started crying while I was with the guy. When I heard that, I looked at the guy and thought to myself, my God, what am I doing? I pushed him away and ended things right then and there. He was stunned and apologetic, and I told him to leave my house immediately. When I later found out I was pregnant, I assumed the child was my husband's since I was only with the other guy on two occasions without protection. I know it only takes once, but our encounters happened during a time of the month when I thought it was safe. We had our daughter, who is precious and a real daddy's girl. Then a little over four months ago, I gave birth to our second son. After that, I had my tubes tied because we only wanted three kids. The pregnancy was complicated and I was put on bed rest during the final two months due to preeclampsia. During that time, my husband was incredibly supportive, ensuring that I was well taken care of and meeting all my needs for my health and that of our baby. Fortunately, Everything turned out well, and our son is now four months old, resembling and behaving just like his father. Our marriage seemed to be going smoothly, and I had completely pushed the foolish mistake I made two years ago out of my mind, not even dwelling on it anymore. However, a couple of weeks ago on a Saturday morning, my husband approached me, saying he needed to discuss something important. With his parents there to watch the kids, we went into the bedroom for privacy. I could tell by his expression that it was serious. It startled me when my husband revealed that he had DNA tested all three kids some months ago. I was taken aback, as he had done this without consulting me. Before I could respond, he said something that left me speechless. He told me our daughter wasn't his child. He said it calmly and suddenly, leaving me speechless with my mouth hanging open. I felt my breath getting heavier like I might pass out, so I sat down on the edge of the bed trying to find words but failing. He advised me not to deny or lie, claiming he knew the truth about the father. He insisted I contact him for child support once we were divorced. Hearing this devastated me, and I collapsed back onto the bed, sobbing uncontrollably with my hands covering my face. My husband knelt beside me, retrieved a folder from under the dresser, and handed it to me. When I opened it, I saw it contained divorce papers, and I lost all composure. I cried so hard I couldn't breathe properly, while he remained calm throughout. When I asked how he found out, he refused to disclose, saying it was irrelevant. All he revealed was that he had known for some time, but waited until I recovered from my condition to act. Now that I was healed and our baby was healthy, he wanted out of the marriage. I inquired if his parents were aware, and he confirmed they knew, which hurt deeply as I had a close relationship with his mother, who hadn't mentioned anything to me. Since then, I've been deeply depressed. I've pleaded for forgiveness and tried everything to make him reconsider, but he refuses and won't discuss it. He won't even let me explain my side, saying he doesn't care why I did it. He says he can't stay married to a cheater and nothing I do or offer will change his mind. He just wants a smooth divorce and to stay friendly for our two kids' sake, emphasizing he won't be a father figure to our daughter. The other day, in anger, I asked how he could give up his daughter. I quickly apologized, admitting I shouldn't have said it. I acknowledged my responsibility and his feelings, but I wanted to keep our family together. He said I should have thought of that before being unfaithful. He's right, but I can't change the past. I'd give anything for a chance to do things differently. Right now, he's still in the house, 
but he's moved into our son's room and sleeps on the extra twin bed. I hear them chatting every night, and it hurts to think about what I've done. Besides that, not much has changed. He's still his cheerful self and a loving father. Sometimes I feel like we're making progress, only for him to bring up getting a lawyer and burst my hope. I'm in panic mode and willing to do anything to fix our marriage. I'm taking it day by day and hoping for the best. Update. Things have really gone downhill for me since I first posted. Like I said before, as far as I'm concerned, my husband is the real father of my daughter and the only one she's ever known and loved. He loves her too and has treated her no differently since this all went down. He'd been telling me daily to get a lawyer and reach out to the bio to have him step up and start being a father to my daughter. I refuse and keep telling him he is her father and I wouldn't call him. Well, to my surprise, my husband did something I never dreamed he'd do. He called the owner of the business that did the work on our house and told him what was going on. The owner is the father of the guy I had the affair with and his son works for him. When the owner found out, he was really angry with his son and very apologetic to my husband. He promised my husband he would make this right and force his son to step up and take financial responsibility for my daughter. He also refunded my husband for all the work they did on our house, which was substantial. Since that time, their lawyer has been calling and leaving me messages about getting DNA testing done, but I haven't returned any of her calls. Then today, I got a certified letter from the attorney asking me to contact her as soon as possible, stating if I didn't respond within seven days, she would be filing a challenge of paternity claim on behalf of her client. I don't want bio in our lives and wish he would just go away instead of breaking up my family. Is there anything I can do to stop this? Second update. I spoke with the attorney of the person I had an affair with, and I've scheduled an appointment for this upcoming Wednesday to have my daughter's DNA tested. I asked if they could use the results from the test my husband did, but they said they couldn't. When I told my husband about this, all he said was, good. He acts like he doesn't care, but I know he loves our daughter because he interacts with her as usual. I believe his behavior stems from pride and not wanting to financially support another man's child. This made me wonder if there's a way for the biological father to pay child support, but then relinquish his parental rights to my husband. This could compensate my husband for raising our daughter. If we could arrange this, I believe my husband would agree to maintain the status quo. Final update. I've received many requests for an update, so I wanted to come back and provide one. Since my last post, a lot has happened, and I'll try to catch you up from where I left off. After receiving the DNA results, the biological father of my middle child filed a petition with the court for visitation rights until a custody hearing could be held. The judge granted supervised visitation, but noted that since my husband was legally recognized as her father, custody would not be granted unless my husband gave up his parental rights. I was hopeful when I heard this, thinking it might make my husband reconsider. However, when I spoke to him, he mentioned that his lawyer had already been in contact with the biological father's lawyer, and they were working on an agreement. One begged him to change his mind, but he refused. He said he loves my daughter but told me this was best for her and for Evervone involved. I told him I didn't want the bio father in her life, and he told me I should have thought about that before I cheated. I told him I would give him all the child support checks I received from the bio, and he could do whatever he wanted with the money. He looked at me and asked if I was serious. I said yes, I was, and he told me I was a sick person. My husband ended signing away his parental rights so now the bio is paying child support and has 25% custody of my daughter. I'm so upset about this that I can't even function. My husband, on the other hand, acts if he is relieved by the whole thing. Our final divorce hearing is scheduled for the first week of next month. However, we've already sold our house and I'm back living with my parents for now. My husband took his proceeds and bought another house just down the street from where we lived. I've agreed to everything he wanted in the divorce, so... The hearing is just going to be a formality. I'm hoping between now and then he has a change of heart, but that's looking less likely with each passing day. I thought since he's no longer financially responsible for my daughter, he'd change his mind, but he hasn't. So in less than a month, I'll be divorced and forever brokenhearted. I've been in a constant state of stress since this all started and feel like love aged 20 years. 
Meanwhile, my husband acts like he's walking on air. Without a care in the world, I love that man and always will, and I miss him so much. I know I'll never find another one like him, so I'm not even going to try. I hope in time I can forgive myself and stop feeling so depressed about life. Thank you for all the support I've received here.